So we're gonna talk about the Amish in New York today. A lot of people don't realize this is one of the most important states for the Amish. It actually has the fifth largest Amish population. Over 21,000 Amish live in New York, spread across nearly 60 settlements. I'm gonna run through the main communities where we will find the Amish. I'm also gonna talk about some of the businesses and some of the things you can do in some of those places. This has been a state that's really drawn a lot of Amish settlements over the past 20 years. In fact, the population has more than quadrupled since 2000. It's been seen as an attractive state in large part due to the availability of relatively inexpensive farmland. New York first saw Amish settlers way back in 1831, which was when the first community was founded. <laughs> Over a hundred years went by before another Amish settlement was founded. And that was in 1949 in Conowango Valley in Cattaraugus County. By the way, I know I'm going to mispronounce some of these names. The Conowango Valley Settlement, it's the oldest in the state and the second largest in the state. There are currently around 2,500 Amish living there, spread across 18 different church districts. So the church district is kind of how the Amish organize themselves. It's basically a congregation and made up of typically anywhere from like 20 to 40 families. They worship at the home. In other words, they gather within a member's home or in a building or a workshop on their property, for example. So they don't build church buildings for the vast majority of Amish. Conowango Valley is home to a group known as the Troyer Amish. And while they're not the plainest Amish, they are one of the more conservative Amish groups. So they don't have the linoleum floors that you'll see in other uh, Amish homes, you won't see upholstered furniture as you might in other Amish homes. These homes don't have indoor toilets, so you've got the outhouses here. And they use oil lamps rather than gas lamps, which would be more common in the more progressive Amish homes. They moved here from Ohio and from Pennsylvania. The motivation that even back in 1949 was to get more farmland and, and keep an agricultural tradition. You know, although the Amish have branched out into small business and other occupations over the past decades, farming, dairy farming in particular, is, for a lot of Amish, that's kind of the ideal occupation because you can be at home, uh, work together with your family. It gives plenty of opportunity for children to learn to work. There's always some job to be done on a farm, always chores to be done. At the same time, the Amish in this settlement are quite entrepreneurial. So if you go there, you're going to find a lot of small businesses there. Sometimes people wonder, is it okay to visit an Amish business? For the most part, yes. I mean, they're open for business. And it, I, I consider it a great way to meet Amish people. There's not really a better way when you just go visit their business and strike up a conversation while you're there. You're not going to find like everyone's always going to be talkative, but you will find some quite talkative, friendly people. And in fact, there's even a kind of a tourist uh, map. It's called the Amish Trail. Something like, uh, I think, 180 or 200 different Amish businesses on that map listed. You'll have Amish woodworkers, you'll have bakeries, people selling maple syrup, quilts, rugs, furniture, buggy shops for the Amish. They're hickory rocker makers, cabinet makers, sheds, cabin makers, fabric shop, variety shop. You've even got a toy store. We had a post about this uh, particular toy store where the Amish owner makes wooden toys. So all sorts of businesses. So if you like stopping in at Amish businesses, this is a good community to visit. By the way, my name is Eric Westner. I'm obviously not Amish, but I've visited dozens of Amish communities across the country since 2004, and I run the Amish America website. So the largest community in New York is located way up by the Canadian border in St. Lawrence County, kind of around the town of Hewelton. This would be the pretty much the most conservative Amish that you'll come across, the known as Swartz and Trooper Amish. So these will be even more conservative than the Troyer Amish I just mentioned from Conowango Valley. They basically originate in Holmes County, Ohio. So coming to New York was a way for these Amish to uh, maybe move away from more progressive influences back in their home community. And they started this community back in the mid-1970s, and it's got, grown, again, to be the largest in the state, and it has over 2,600 Amish living there. So it's a very similar size to the Conowango Valley settlement. So similarly to the Conowango Valley Amish, you can expect to find a number of small businesses in this community. 
I found that to be pretty typical of Swartz and Trooper Amish communities. They often, they're often always selling something out of their homes, whether it's quilts or rag rugs or baskets or produce or canned goods or baked goods. Those are all very common uh, items that uh, Swartz and Trooper Amish will sell. And of course, they'll also have some furniture businesses. They'll operate sawmills, other manufacturing. Karen Johnson Weiner, if you're interested, by the way, in Amish in New York, she would be the authority on that on this topic. She's written a book called New York Amish. She wrote that in New York's North Country, the women quilt much more, and the majority of the quilts they make are for sale outside the community. So you have, again, a lot of Amish producing products for non-Amish markets. You know, you have the businesses that are clearly more Amish-oriented, like the buggy shops, uh, or often like the fabric shops where they sell fabrics that Amish use to, to make clothes or to quilt. But a lot of Amish are geared towards selling products to non-Amish. Likewise, Karen Johnson Weiner noted that the Amish women in this area produce a variety of goods for sale that they themselves would not use. For example, Christmas tree skirts uh, and toaster covers. They don't have moral issues with those products. It's just something they choose not to use themselves. They don't think they're evil necessarily. It's just they just don't fit within their culture. You know, these Swartz and Trooper Amish are the plainest. Now, they don't have this slow-moving vehicle triangle on their buggies. That's something that even the Troyer Amish will use. They also don't have, you know, plumbing in the home. I mean, they're, they're very plain and very slow to change. It doesn't mean they are completely resistant to change, however. By the way, if you're liking this video, if you don't mind, give it a quick like. I appreciate that. So the next community are the Amish at Clymer in the western end of the state. This would be Chautauqua County. The Clymer Amish are relatively progressive compared to the Amish I've mentioned already. And these Amish came from Joga County, Ohio, also in the mid-1970s. Similarly, it was you know, land pressures that motivated them to move to New York. So this is the third largest settlement in the state. There's around 1,500 Amish living here. They have carpentry crews, construction businesses here. They've got some tourist-oriented businesses here. And if you go here, you'll see a difference compared to even the nearby Conowango Valley settlement. Uh, Amish here would have phones and phone shanties, so they have access to a phone. That's something that the plainest Amish groups do not permit. In this county, Chautauqua County, you've also got three other Amish settlements in the same county. So next we have the Mohawk Valley area. And this area has drawn a number of Amish groups from a variety of backgrounds. So the first one established here was the Byler Amish settlement at Fort Plain. And this has got over 600 Amish living there in four churches. Their roots are in a community in western Pennsylvania called uh, New Wilmington. They have the kind of orange or brownish top buggies. So they're quite, quite distinct. Also a quite plain community. So the largest community in the Mohawk Valley area would be in Montgomery County, where you've got over 800 Amish living there. You've also got groups here that originated from Delaware and another group from Joga County, Ohio. So one of these communities I wanted to mention in Otsego County would be the community near the town of Morris. And uh, I visited that one several years ago. Uh, one of my f Amish friends from Ohio uh, in Holmes County and moved up there and started a new community. So I got to kind of see his very kind of relatively young community at that time still. Quite a different uh, place they had moved to uh, compared to the large Amish community in Holmes County. But that was my friend Daniel Weaver, who was also featured uh, in some media. Actually, he was in an article that was in the Guardian newspaper on the Amish and technology, which is a really interesting piece where he talks about the effects of technology uh, and the uh, concerns that the Amish have for that. So I'll put a link to that too in the description. So a couple more sizable communities in New York worth pointing out here. There's one in Seneca County near uh, the towns of Romulus and Ovid, and there are over a thousand Amish living there. And you've also got one in Steuben County, which would be near Jasper and Woodhull with over 800 Amish living there. Steuben County, in fact, has three additional Amish communities within the county besides that one. There's a number of communities that have been founded by Amish from Pennsylvania. I mentioned one of them already at Fort Plain. A settlement at Mayville was started by Amish from the New Wilmington, Pennsylvania community. They have a quite restrictive 
ordnung. Ordnung is uh, the word for the kind of the rules or the guidelines, standards of the church. Each church has its own ordnung. They've got plainer clothing. Their wagons have steel wheels. So Lowville in Lewis County is another a community founded by Amish from Pennsylvania. These Amish came from Franklin County in Pennsylvania, and we're also joined by some Amish from Maryland. So I'm not going to be able to talk about every single Amish community in New York, given that there are about five dozen of them. But what I'll do here, I'm going to run through and give you all the uh, county names where you'll find uh, Amish uh, in the state. And I'll also attach a link to a listing of Amish settlements uh, as well uh, in the description. And you'll have a, a link to the full list of the New York communities there. And uh, expect to hear some mispronunciations, local folks. So if you want to correct me in the comments, that's fine. Feel free. A lot of these have several communities in them. So here it goes. Allegheny, Cattaraugus, Cayuga, Chautauqua, Chenango, Clinton, Cortland, Essex, Franklin, Herkimer, Jefferson, Lewis, Livingston, Madison, Montgomery, Oneida, Orleans, Oswego, Otsego, Schoharie, 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 <laughs> Seneca, St. Lawrence, Steuben, Tioga, Washington, Wayne, and Wyoming County. And again, a, a good number of those have multiple communities within the county. So I'll put a link to the in the description uh, to the listing. Visiting an Amish business is a good way to meet Amish people. And, you know, they're open for business. If there's an open sign outside, I always take that as an invitation to come in and, you know, pay a visit and buy something. I usually like to buy at least something when I visit an Amish store, uh, whether that's like, uh, you know, maybe a baked good or a candle or whatever they sell there. You can usually find some interesting things in some of the Amish uh, stores, especially uh, the variety stores. And uh, I always like the food stores, the bakeries, can't go wrong with those. Uh, one example I already mentioned, which is the uh, Conowango Valley map, but other communities that I've come across anyway that have business maps, Livingston County has its own map. So there's a couple of communities in Livingston County. This map lo it looks like it has about three dozen different Amish businesses on it. When I go to visit, I, I kind of like to just drive around once I have a sense of where the general Amish uh, area is and see what I can find. But the maps, I've you know used them as well too. They're quite handy and can kind of get you to what you're looking for. There was an article on this community and this map actually in the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle newspaper. One of the families mentioned there was a Samuel and Sarah Yoder in this community. And it says that the husband and wife team makes polylon furniture, clocks, birdhouses, and quilts. Apparently the quilts are quite reasonably priced according to this article. The writer said that she bought a Bargello style quilt that she paid $395 for in queen size. She said that that would be less than half the price of the Pennsylvania Amish quilts that she would, had seen online. Other examples from this business would be uh, wood birdhouses there would sell for $28 and mission style wood clocks available for $250. So other ones include a bulk food store, a greenhouse, and uh, this community is apparently pretty plain. There are no phones there, apparently, and uh, Sarah Yoder suggested communicating by writing a letter. That's all you have to do with some Amish. I've got an Amish uh, friend acquaintance in North Carolina from this very plain Swartz and Truber Amish group I mentioned, and he's a furniture maker, and that's how uh, he has to communicate with his customers. They have to write him letters because he doesn't have any sort of phone access, which is different than most Amish who usually have, uh, you know, a phone in some, you know, a shared phone that's maybe in like a separate building that four or five families would share. But um, these guys don't. So very plain. Another example of an Amish guide I found was one that covered two states. And that would be the Allegheny County area in New York and Potter County, Pennsylvania. So some of the businesses there we've got in this map, I include a variety store and a country store. We've got several lumber businesses. So if you need lumber, you know where to go. Basket maker, harness shop, butchering services, 
uh, building materials. Um, there was a business with animal feeds and also maple syrup, storage sheds, greenhouse, and then they had a horseshoeing business, so a farrier. So you see this kind of marketing where, uh, you know, the maps themselves are often produced by non-Amish, but like a local tourism board or chamber of commerce or something like that will we'll, we'll put these out. And you know, the Amish can be a, a big draw. And uh, so if you get Amish coming into the area, that's a great kind of economic benefit in some cases. Uh, if you look at Amish history, you can see a kind of a long history of, of places where Amish once lived. Uh, but no longer do for various reasons. Sometimes an area just doesn't work out for them. Now, in the case of New York, the original settlement that I mentioned at the beginning of this video was in Lewis County. It was founded in 1831 uh, near uh, the town of Crogan, of Crowan. That one apparently grew fairly steadily during the 1830s and 1840s, uh, but it eventually assimilated with uh, more progressive church movements. And by the 1950s, uh, at, was identifying as a Mennonite church. So you had another settlement in Chautauqua, Chautauqua County uh, at Sinclairville, which lasted about a decade from 1950 to 1960. Finally, and this is kind of interesting, you had a settlement uh, near the town of Poland in Herkimer County that lasted from 2002 to 2007. And that community disbanded. Uh, I, I, I assume that the uh, settlers there ended up, ended up moving to other communities. And later that year, a brand new settlement, which was unrelated to the first one, was established also in that same area near the town of Poland and uh, has grown since then to about 260 people. So uh, that's kind of unusual, but occasionally it will happen that an Amish community unrelated to the first one will settle in an area where a a previous Amish community once was. So another example of that would be the community in Brooks Garden, Virginia. So New York is the fifth largest uh, state as far as Amish population, uh, one of the most attractive for the Amish over the past couple decades. This is part of a series of state guide videos, which I'm planning to do one on each of the 31 states which have an Amish settlement. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to stay in the loop, just hit the subscribe button. I put out two videos per week. Thanks for watching. See you next time.